The Lord be with you. Listen to the good news as proclaimed in the Holy Gospel of St. Mark, chapter 9, beginning at the second verse. Glory to Christ our Savior. Mark, chapter 9, verse 2 to 9. Six days later, Jesus took with him Peter and James and John and led them up a high mountain apart by themselves. And he was transfigured before them, and his clothes became dazzling white, such as no one on earth could bleach them. And there appeared to them Elijah with Moses, who were talking to Jesus. Then Peter said to Jesus, Rabbi, it is good for us to be here. Let us make three dwellings, one for you, one for Moses, and one for Elijah. He did not know what to say, for they were terrified. Then a cloud overshadowed them, and from the cloud came a voice, This is my son, the beloved. Listen to him. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As they were coming down from the mountain, he ordered them to tell no one about what they had seen until after the Son of Man had risen from the dead. The Gospel of Christ. Praise to Christ our Lord. We bow our heads in prayer. Lord, may the words of my mouth and the meditations of all our hearts be acceptable in thy sight, O Lord, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Please do be seated. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Whenever I read this story of the transfiguration, I am reminded of that One time, I went on a hike up Lion's Head. It was testing. It was challenging. There were many moments when I was ready to turn around and give up. There were many moments that I used adjectives that I cannot use from this pulpit this morning. There were moments where I continually cursed those who invited me on that light hawk, as they called it. But reaching the summit or the peak of Lion's Head and capturing the spectacular view that one is able to only see from that point, I too was able, like Peter, to exclaim, It is good, Lord, to be here. But what's interesting about this hike up Lion's Head and the reaching the top is that the view one captures, you can only see from that point. The view you see once you reach the top, you can only see from the peak. Now what does that mean? That means that every time you want to enjoy that breathtaking view, you have to climb that mountain. Every time you want to capture that beautiful image of the city, 
you have to make that trek up the mountain. And so when you get to the top, I'm sure like me and so too like Peter, we would just want to build dwellings there and stay there to capture that moment for as long as possible. Friends, you see, for many of us, that's what life's journey is about. It's about climbing many mountains. For many of us, life is about wanting to give up at so many points. It's about struggling to take the next step. But more importantly, life is about choosing to keep going. It's about seeking the top of the mountain and working hard towards getting there. And so, yes, for many of us, when we have that mountaintop experience, that experience of capturing God's beauty, we would prefer to stay there and not climb any other mountain. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. As an Anglican people, we are a people of rhythm. Now, when I wrote that, I, I wrote a little footnote to say, please clarify what you mean by rhythm. And when I say we are a people of rhythm, I refer not to the one we so joyfully express at our annual parish dance. For if that were the rhythm I were to be speaking of, I certainly would not be Anglican, as I have no rhythm. But the rhythm I refer here to is the rhythm of life. Our Anglican spirituality is, for the most part, aligned to the Benedictine spirituality. A spirituality which is built on the rhythm of prayer, work, and rest. Furthermore, as Anglicans, our liturgical calendar has a specific rhythm to it. It allows us to morph from one season to the next. And today is one such day when our liturgical rhythm takes center stage as we move from one liturgical setting to another. For today, our epiphany journey comes to an end and we now move very swiftly into our Lenten journey. And this we see so beautifully described in our readings this morning, which really sets the tone for the journey which lies ahead. In our readings, we pick up a tone where we notice what we would call a change of gears. The Epiphany season is generally understood to be the season of incarnation, a time when we are called to reflect on God incarnate, to reflect on how Jesus is indeed the Word made flesh. But Epiphany and the season thereof is wonderfully brought to a close this morning in our Gospel text, which I just read where we see the coming together of the old and the new. We see Moses and Elijah as representatives of the old covenant, and we see Jesus as the representative of the new covenant, coming together and ushering in a new dispensation. And that's what Transfiguration Sunday is. It's a Sunday where we are challenged to transcend 
into a new dispensation. A moment of being transfigured. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And so as we shift from Epiphany to Lent, we too are challenged to remember that Jesus is with us. Jesus is with us. Lent for many of us will be a journey when at times we too will look around in search of the other. It's during Lent that we too will look around and search for a mountain peak. And for many of us, Lent will be a journey where we also notice that no one is around anymore, but only Jesus Lent is generally a time where we intentionally deepen our relationship with Jesus through prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. And it can be a very lonely and testing journey. For so many of us, Lent has become a very morbid time a time of frustration and dissatisfaction, a time of climbing the mountain. And for so many of us, Lent has also become just another countdown to Easter. And we cannot wait to get back to enjoying whatever it is we have chosen to give up for Lent. Friends, instead, today as we embrace the rhythms of our tradition, as we move from Epiphany to Lent, we are challenged to do so acknowledging that Jesus is with us. We are not entering this wilderness alone. We will not walk through the wilderness alone. We will not be tempted alone. This mountain that we face ahead of us promises each one of us a breathtaking view. Today we are invited to prepare ourselves to start our climb. Suddenly when they looked around, They saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. Today, I want to encourage each one of us as we ready ourselves as a parish community for this Lenten journey. Let us be bold. Let us not do the easy thing of giving up a beverage of our choice or that chocolate which we enjoy so much. Let us not give up something that will make us sad or even miserable. But let us be bold and do something which will change the world. Let us do something we are scared of. Because today, through that wonderful gospel text, we are assured that even when we look around and no one is with us anymore, Jesus is with us. Suddenly when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. And so again, let us take up rather than give up. For this Lent, let us take up rather than give up. Let us be bold and take up loving those whom it may normally be difficult to love. Let us as a community take up forgiving those 
whom we have struggled to forgive. Let us take up acknowledging those whom we would usually not acknowledge. Let us take up caring and loving ourselves. Let us as a community here at St. Saviour's take up the burdens of our sisters and brothers and help them carry it. May your and my Lenten journey not be about what we give up individually, but rather may it be a journey characterized by what we take up as a community of faith, a community of the old and the new coming together. And so friends, may your and my Lent be a journey filled with promise and love. Suddenly, when they looked around, they saw no one with them anymore, but only Jesus. In the name of God, who is Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Amen.